Hi everyone. It's episode four of Saturdays Are For The Boy. Um, it's my own little uh, college football vlog where I get to put a couple of my thoughts out there in the world for, you know, maybe one person to uh, see. But, you know, it helps me. It, it's very enjoyable for me to just say these things so I don't just think them in my head. Because um, my girlfriend's not that interested in what I have to say. Uh, today I'm going to start with um, just a couple words on what I think about the NFL Combine. No actual analysis of what happened at this Combine, just general thoughts. And then I go into, like I've been doing, um, the top five receiving attacks um, in college football for 2019. That's wide receivers, tight ends, well, with a little bit of quarterback, I guess, thrown in there. So let's start with what I think about the NFL Combine. It is the most overhyped, overblown thing that exists. Um, I guess it's fun for certain um, fans to see maybe their uh, favorite college players one last time in a, in a vaguely college setting um, compared to other college kids. Uh, but but um, to me, you don't actually learn anything from the combine. I don't get why NFL teams put so much stock, why people put so much stock into the NFL combine. Um, the, the proof is in the pudding to me. The game tape is the most important thing. Um, if there are huge red flags about somebody, you'd think it would have showed up before. Um, and I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking about on the field red flags. Um, I'm talking about off the field red flags, you know, uh, Randy Gregory like has never played um, and there were a ton of red flags about him. Uh, and when it comes to injury concerns, again, those things, if a team is really concerned, I don't understand why a combine would change things. Players prep and plan and prepare for so long. Somebody running a 4-3 is amazing. But does that translate to on-field talent? To me, no. It just shows you're extremely athletic. So I, I just don't get the combine. All right, moving on. Next topic, something a little bit more interesting to me. Just top five receiving attacks in college football going into 2019. Um, receiving a little bit is similar to rushing. Last week, I talked about the top rushing attacks. I mentioned things like why Clemson was over Wisconsin because of the receiving threats and the passing threat that Clemson brings, which will open up massive holes for Travis Etienne. Um, so things like that are taken into account when I do this. Um, a little bit of what the quarterback's deal is, um, who the, who's throwing to them, a little bit gets played into it. But really, uh, for the most part, it's the core as a whole, complementary pieces, talent, things like that. So starting at number five, I've got the USC Trojans. Um, their quarterback is JT Daniels. We don't know a ton about him still. He was a true freshman last year um, that was practically a high school senior. We will see what he uh, what he brings to the table, but he's got talent around him. Um, their top three receivers coming back um, in Michael Pittman, Eamon Ross, St. Brown, and Tyler Vaughn's. Those three are great, and they're great complimentary pieces. Tyler Vaughn's a great slot man. Yeah, Tyler Vaughn's is a great slot man. Amon Ross St. Brown has a lot to prove. He's probably going to try to beat all of his brother's numbers um, out at Notre Dame. Um, big, physical guy. Michael Pittman feels like an eighth-year senior. He's been around forever to me. Um, they've got three great complementary pieces that if JT Daniels can find, um, they could be really dangerous. Number four, I've got the Michigan Wolverines. This is similar to USC in that it's just it's three guys that have been around the block a little bit that have massive talent that complement each other really well. Donovan Peoples Jones, Tariq Black, um, Nico Small, and even the tight end McCune. You throw those four into the mix and Shea Patterson distributing. Michigan doesn't have much of a rushing attack, but for the first time maybe ever under a Jim Harbaugh-led team, the passing attack is going to be the scary thing about this team. Those four guys 
create mismatches, whether it's McCoon being huge, the new prototype tight end, whether it's the um, physicalness of Tariq Black, um, as long as he's healthy, whether it's Donovan Peoples-Jones making people miss. This is a complete wide receiving core, bringing back pretty much everybody. Um, in the Big Ten, you don't get a ton of receiving cores this deep. You just don't. This team is scary. That's why I have them at number four. At number three, I've got Oklahoma State. Now, Oklahoma State is here mostly because of one guy. Tylen Wallace is the best wide receiver in college football, in my opinion. Um, the numbers speak for themselves. Even without somebody like a Mason Rudolph throwing the ball last year, it was Cornelius for the most part, he still put up staggering numbers. Then you throw in Dylan Stoner, who's another sort of eighth-year senior type guy, and all of a sudden you've got two guys on each side that are really tough to guard. It's the Big 12, which means numbers might be inflated a little bit to start with, um, and it's a pass-friendly attack. But that doesn't mean these guys aren't extremely dangerous and great at what they do. Oklahoma State's produced great wide receivers in the NFL and in college, these are just the next wave of what's quickly becoming one of the top destinations to me for wide receivers. At number two, here we go. It's the rich getting richer. It's Clemson. Number two quarterback, number one rushing attack, number two aerial attack. Justin Ross was a man possessed in the national championship game. He really showed out. He's back. He's only a sophomore. Mari Rogers is back. Um, he also... Uh, is a physical freak. And then you've got T. Higgins, who's um, the senior member of that group at this point, it seems like. He's back. You've got, you know, Ross just fast and physical. Higgins just straight fast. Roy Rogers, sort of a complete possession receiver. Um, with Trevor Lawrence distributing this ball, um, I don't know how, how these touches go around in Clemson between ETN, these wide receivers, and then Trevor Lawrence getting it to everybody. Somehow Clemson's created an atmosphere where everybody's happy. So um, we're going to see scary things out of them this year. That's all I have to say. And then my top wide receiving group. Again, another case of the rich getting richer. It's the Alabama Crimson Tide. Listen to these four names. Jerry Judy um, won the Bolitnikoff last year. Devontae Smith. Um, the hero of the national championship game two years ago. Henry Ruggs, who supposedly just ran like a 4 2 5 or something, unofficial 40. Well, apparently the fastest guy of all time. Uh, and Jalen Waddell, who might actually be faster than Henry Ruggs. Um, in that group, you got three guys that are going to be juniors this year, one guy that's going to be a sophomore, two are throwing the ball to, to all of them as a junior. This is. Far and away, the best receiving core in the country. The connection that these guys have with Tua, being through it all with him for two full years now. Um, we saw what they could do last year. I expect more of the same this year. Um, they don't have quite the running backs that they did. Well, they probably will. They're just names that we don't know beyond Najee Harris. But it doesn't matter because... These four guys would all be the best receiver on 125 other college football teams. These four guys together, I can't think of a receiving core in my memory that's this deep and this talented and this scary. I mean, two on one side, I, I, I don't know how you guard all four of these guys at once if they stick all four of them out there at once. They can just run backyard football and beat you with speed, with quickness, with great hands, with whatever. They can practically just run backyard football, you know, run around for a little bit, two of fines, one touchdown. I mean, I would be shocked if this team doesn't average 45 points a game just because of the talent on this receiving core. So there you have it. Again, sorry for the uh, the unofficial mascot of this, uh, of this vlog, Basil, going nuts a couple times. He is uh, very much a vocal dog, and this is just happening in my living room. So he sees a car or a person, he barks.
So uh, he's he's on the lookout right now. So I apologize for him. Unofficial mascot of Saturdays are for the boy, Basil, for myself. Um, thank you so much for listening, um, for watching. Don't let me know what you think. I, I know this is very, very low quality, but let me know what you think about my thoughts. Um, the video quality and the production value probably won't increase very much, um, even if it's requested, unless people send me equipment, um, because this is just me putting my thoughts out there. Uh, but if you have thoughts about what I had to say, let me know. Hey, I'll have this conversation. I would enjoy it. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching and listening um, and being a college football fan, 365 like me. This has been Saturdays for the boy. Um, have a good week.